In this video, I will teach you how to solve the 5x5 five five Rubik's Cube. But, I won't be using the Rubik's Professor because it's just so sad. It's loose, it doesn't cut corners very well, and overall a pretty bad cube. I will be using the V-Cube 5 instead. It's much easier for me to handle in the video, and the only difference is that it's made up of white plastic, and instead of white stickers, you got black. It shouldn't be hard for you to follow it in the video. Okay, now with that being said, let's get to the tutorial. Okay, so what we're going to do is solve the centers, just like we did on the 4x4, so we'll solve these 3x3 three three centers, and then the edges. And to do that, you connect 1x3 bars like this. Very simple to do. And connect them together. Like that. That's very easy to do. Okay, now on to the yellow side. Now what we're going to try to do first is get the middle 1x3 bar first, because the centers don't move in relation to each other, so it's just nice to get that out of the way. So, we've already got two pieces connected together, and what I can just do, rotate it into position like this, go up, grab an edge, and bring it down. And we've got a 3x1 bar. Okay, but if you don't have any of these center edges touching the center, then just connect some edges together so that they are across from each other, just like this, and then rotate it into position. Then you can go up, get between the edges to form a 1x3 bar, and then you can bring it down, just using the same moves like what you did with the 4x4. And then you can connect other 1x3 bars easily. And go up and grab them. Very easy to do. And if you find like one or two pieces down here, then you just want to pull them out of the way like this, and then go ahead and connect the 1x3 bar like normally. Okay, and then I'll just solve the blue center, and it's just much the same as solving the black one. Very simple to do. And then you just solve the next center like you did with the yellow one. There. So really only the complicated thing about doing the centers is probably the last two. And I'm just going to do the red one right here. And what you want to do is get the middle 1x3 done first, even if a 1x3 bar is already developed here. So I, I'm going to go up, grab this edge, and bring it back down to form a 1x3 bar, and then I'll turn it so that it is now vertical. Now what you want to do is get these corners and use them to connect a 1x3 bar like this. So when you bring it up, it forms a 1x3 bar, and then you can bring it down and rotate it into position. Okay, but when this happens, when the corner is not in the right place so that when you bring it up, it doesn't create a 1x3 bar. So what you want to do is rotate the 2x1 bar into this place like this, then rotate up the corner center, then rotate it up like this so that it is now in position, and then bring it back. Then you can grab the 1x3 bar like normally. Okay, now if this happens where you've got a center edge down here, you want to bring this up here and replace it with a corner. So just bring it up like this and rotate the corner down into place. And then to form a 2 by one bar, rotate this center edge into the right place. Go up to form a 2 by one bar and push it out of the way. Then you want to grab this corner center. So rotate this over here so that when you bring it up, it gets pushed out of the way. So go ahead and do that and rotate the center into position. And then, as you can see, this, it's not correct. You can't go up and grab it before, so you're going to have to rotate the corner center again, like that. Then you can go up and grab it. 
there, that should give you enough information so that you can solve the centers on your 5x5 Rubik's Cube. Now on to edge pairing. Now it's pretty much just the same as solving a 4x4 again. But what you mainly want to do is look for two edges that are already paired. That'll make things a little easier. Then find the other edge. And here it is. And I'll bring it down. And then what you can just do is pair them like this, bring it up, bring random edges into the same position where the last one was, bring it down, and revert the centers back to normal. Now you still want to look for edges like these. Now it doesn't matter if they're touching, that's okay. Just find the edge that goes in between them. And here it is. Now when you've got the same color facing you, when you go to pair it up, it doesn't work. See, it's flipped wrong. So just like what you did with the 4x4, just rotate it around so that you can just simply bring the middle edge over to connect it. Now something you may also want to look for is where two edges are touching each other, but they're flipped wrong. When that happens, go ahead and find the edge piece, which happens to be right here, and bring it down so that they are adjacent to each other, like this. If the edge ends up being like this so that it is across from the other two edges, then rotate it back like this. Then what you do is you rotate the edge into the mismatched edges and then apply the flipping algorithm, which again is R, F, I, U, R, I, F. And then you just revert the centers back to normal and the edge will be paired. But if you don't find any of those cases where any edges are touching each other, then you just want to find some edges, like I'll pick out this orange-black one, and I'll need to find its other edge. Like here's this one. And rotate it down into position like this so that the opposite colors of the edges are facing you. If this happens, of course, you won't be able to pair them. But I don't want you to just simply rotate it over here, because that won't make any room for the other edge. So what I want you to do is rotate it up onto the top layer, rotate it over like this, and bring it down. So now it's just simply on the other side of the edge, and now the opposite colors are facing you. And this leaves room for the last edge. So go ahead and look for that, and it happens to be right here. But when I go to rotate it up here, the same color is facing me. We don't want that. But now, since you've made room for it, you can simply rotate this back. Then you've got an edge here, an edge here, and an edge here, and you can simply pair them up. Then go up and replace it with random edges and revert the centers back to normal. Now, if you find this case where the middle edge is flipped wrong, but they're all paired correctly, then make sure that you've got random edges to the left or to the right, and these are already touching, so I'm not going to want to use those, so I'll bring these down. Then, what you want to do is take the middle edge out and move it over to here. Then, apply the flipping algorithm, and revert it back to normal. And since you flip the edge, it'll come back so that the edge will become paired. So that should give you enough information on solving almost the rest of the edges. So just continue doing that until I tell you what to do next. Okay, if you find this case where you just have three edges left, you don't have any on the top layer or on the bottom layer or over here, but there are no two edges connected together. So how can you, after you pair up these edges, how do you replace them with random ones? What you need to do is rotate one of the edges up onto the top layer anyway. Then go pair up just two edges, bring it onto the top layer and replace it with that edge. Bring it down and revert the centers back to normal. And now you've got two edges touching each other. So go ahead and set those up like that and rotate the other edge onto the top layer and you can pair them up correctly.